Hey guys, welcome to TGS. Today we're going to be talking about the wood pigeon. That is Columba Palumbus, the woody as we like to call it. A huge agricultural pest here in the UK, something that breeds year round and, well, that we enjoy pursuing the sport as much as we do it for the crop protection purpose, obviously. Viewed as a hugely sporting bird, but I didn't know a huge amount about them until a couple of months ago when I did a load of research. And today, seeing as I'm sat in quarantine, I am going to share that with you. First off, if you haven't looked up, a pigeon is a bird about this big in the body, this big on the wing, and it flies pretty fast. It's bluish gray, it's got white bands on its neck and its arms. It's, it's not a particularly exciting looking bird, but we all know what a pigeon looks like. So hopefully we've got that down, let's move on. A pigeon can fly quite fast, more importantly. A pigeon's average flight speed is about 70 miles an hour and they've been recorded up to 92 and a half miles an hour. Let's put that into perspective that a grouse, a red grouse, flies at about 70 miles an hour. So on average, a pigeon is just a little faster than a grouse. A pheasant goes from 38 to 48 miles an hour on level speed and can max out, max out at 60 miles an hour. A partridge average in level speed is 30 to 35 miles an hour. A duck, about 50 miles an hour. You get in the picture that these pigeons are extremely, extremely fast. More importantly, their, their huge wingspan allows them to be unbelievably agile in the air and they are built for life in the air. You see them on the floor and they just look like these fat, stupid, waddly birds that you have no respect for. But as soon as you try and engage them in the air with a gun or a falcon or a hawk, they really come into their own. They are the ultimate quarry species. They really are the ultimate quarry species. And it's this speed and agility that, well, gives them a slightly glorious side that most people kind of don't understand. Pigeon nests are a really unglorious platform of twigs. They're not great nest builders. They're like a little flat platform up in a tree they'll drop their eggs on. They can breed year round, as I said, but generally their peak of breeding starts in about April time, same as every other bird out there. But it's their ability to breed year round on a mild year that can make them such an abundant pest species. That said, a pigeon actually only sits on a pair of eggs. It only actually sits on a pair of eggs, but it can do it multiple times in a year. It sits on the eggs for 17 days, and about a month later, those little squabs fledge. And in fact, when you see those little grey birds in a pack that we would usually consider to be blueies or rock pigeons or something like that, since we don't shoot them, generally those those packs of, you know, they can actually pack up in young grey birds are just immature wood pigeons, which is quite interesting. Although it's still not worth taking the risk of shooting a species that is not allowed to be shot if you aren't 100% sure. I'm just going to put that one out there. Interesting little fact that pigeons feed their young on something called pigeon milk. And far from the beautiful other secretion that we drink on a daily basis in tea it actually is a little it's a it's a crop based secretion that kind of is brought out from a gland and out their beak and into the squab it's quite a vile thing but pigeon milk also quite interesting that flamingos do exactly the same thing that i found fascinating most of these young birds actually never make it through the first year and that really isn't much to do with us as hunters that's mostly to do with it being a pretty nasty place to live out out there in the wild. It's cold, there's lots of predators, there's lots of disease, and to be fair, it's a half life. And that is why there isn't a unbelievable amount of pigeons, there's just a massive amount of pigeons. On the flip side, however, there is one pigeon that has been recorded to live to 16 years old. That's older than most dogs. That is pretty impressive. But anyway, let's move on. Do pigeons migrate? Well, that's a question that nobody truly knows the answer to. The answer though is definitely some. The majority of the population of pigeons in the UK are sedentary. They actually occupy what is about a 20 square mile radius of territory and they just move around within that as to where the food goes. This is obviously hugely influenced by us humans and that's twofold. One is agriculture. So obviously we all know that pigeons like drillings, pigeons like, like food. Pigeons go to where the food is but also they like to go around humans. If you think that we obviously put bird feeders out, but more importantly, we plant a huge amount of exotic species that fruit at different times of the year, and birds kind of love that, pigeons being on the top of that list, being greedy gray bastards. So we influence their shift absolutely massively. It would be very interesting to see what they would do in a completely wild environment. The answer would probably, probably not be as abundant as they are now, or as prolific, but that's by the by. Moving on. The contingent of migratory birds that I talked about aren't really studied a great deal and not a huge amount is known about them. This is largely in part to the fact that they are so damn common pretty much across the globe that nobody wants to spend money researching them because 
who truly cares about pigeons? And that's kind of sad that you need to be in danger for people to want to spend money on you or interesting. Whereas actually, I think pigeons are fascinating. And if I had a budget that was the size of the moon, I'd probably investigate where the hell pigeons go. Although some research has been done on this. That research states quite simply that the Scandinavian population is much more migratory than our own and it migrates south during the winter and as such it comes down through Britain and so in autumn we get this huge boost of pigeons before they eventually leave out our south coast. We obviously all know that pigeons flock up, pigeons rarely travel in singles because they like doing this. You know when a pigeon's flying over there and a pigeon's coming into your decoy pattern and it sees it that it will go off to join that one and sometimes the other way around but because they just are so drawn to one another. They are a highly gregarious species, so it is likely that all of the populations across the globe, as they migrate, will intermingle and intertwine. Pretty fascinating, isn't it? How many pigeons are there in the UK? Well, nobody knows an exact answer. What we do know is that the pigeon population has boomed since the 70s, mostly because of changes in agriculture, the fact that we grow so much oilseed rape out there now. Well, it's literally their favourite thing. And it is really, because of the times of year that we now grow it, has changed their breeding cycle, allowing them to be as plentiful as they are. The current estimate in the UK is about 5 million-ish individuals. 5 million. 5 million. That's a lot. I mean, that's, that is many, many pigeons. So bear with me now while well, I get a little bit geeky because we did some maths. Um, a pigeon can eat maximum of about 1,000 grains of wheat a day. That works out to be about 40 grams of wheat. And we're talking about feed wheat here just because it's about the cheapest thing you can buy. That works out to be 200 tonnes a day that could be eaten by pigeons of feed wheat. That, at about 150, 260 pounds a tonne, works out at 30k a day or 210,000 pounds a week that pigeons can eat just in feed wheat. Now bear in mind that there is many, many other products out there that they love to eat that is worth a significant amount more per tonne. Just feel like what that looks like on an annual basis that pigeons will eat. Obviously there's times a year where they don't do as much damage as others, but those pigeons are still there and we still need to control them for when they will start doing damage again. It's estimated that they do over three million pounds worth of damage a year, agricultural damage a year, let alone the fact that they, you know, poo on your nice car. That's probably, probably more important to some people, strangely, but three million pounds worth of damage a year. That is a pest that needs to be controlled. Now for the bit that I found most exciting of all, and this is what does a pigeon see? We've all heard lots of little different things when we were learning to shoot pigeons from hides as kids or learning field craft about what a pigeon can see. But there's actually some proper science on this, and this is what really got me fascinated. Very interestingly, that we will struggle to imagine it purely based on the fact that our brain capacity just can't fathom this. Really? Yeah, I mean, it took me a while to get my head around it. So, let's go. Firstly, pigeons see in a panoramic view with a horizontal field of view of 340 degrees. That's nearly 360, whereas a human can see about 180 degrees. Our vertical field of view is about the same as a pigeon's, but ours is a little bit higher and a pigeon's is significantly lower. Obviously, where it's a sky-based animal, a bird, it wants to see the floor a little bit more than it wants to see the sky. Where this gets really cool is that a pigeon has two points of binocular vision. A human can point its eye, you know, and focus on a very small patch. A pigeon can see from each eye two separate parts. So it has a central piece and it also has a peripheral piece. So it can see out there as well as it can see out there. Whereas obviously we have to look and stare at something to see it and our peripheral will pick up like finger movements, but you can't see how many fingers are moving if you stare forward. A pigeon can! That's amazing! And this is kind of why they are the ultimate predator and why when they see something in those peripherals, it's not just seeing this, it is they can see that the same as they're seeing that pretty much. And this is why you need to be so careful when you're in a hide to conceal your movement because it doesn't matter if it's looking at you or not, it's very likely going to see you. Simply put, a pigeon can just see in this widescreen HD where everything's right, whereas a human kind of only sees the middle of the screen, the rest is blurry. Essentially what it allows it to do, as I said, is process visual cues from everything very, very well. A pigeon, however, is not intelligent, so what it won't see is part of a human's arm and go, that's attached to a human, it will just see an arm shape. So you can get away with standing there as long as you stand still, because it only will associate certain things with other things and it will spot movement over anything else, because its eyesight is still not that great, because its eyes obviously are that big. 
I remember an old boy once telling me as well that a pigeon sees in slow motion. This is actually kind of true. So a human sees in about 24 frames per second. So you know when you skip frame by frame on your telly and it goes one to one to one? That is about 24 frames per second, but usually they pay about 28 so that it looks like a continuous motion picture. Some humans can see a little faster and hence when they watch slower, slower images, they can see it just looks a bit choppy, a bit jumpy. And more importantly, that's when slow-mo, that's because they're taking so many frames per second, like 80 or 180 frames per second, and then, then just playing them at 28 frames per second. So, what a pigeon sees when it watches your 28 frame per second television is what you'd see if you pressed it frame by frame because they can see 75 frames per second. What this allows them to do is process the visual cues that much faster. So when they see something, instead of it just going in in a portion of a second, is their brain is racking through 75 images a second and processing every single one. So one tiny little movement that a human may not pick up quite so easily, a pigeon definitely will. A dead pigeon definitely will. Pretty amazing, right? What this does mean is that a longer range pigeon seeing at 75 frames per second could quite happily see shot coming towards it if the light was right. And as such, I swear, and a lot of people will swear that a pigeon can dodge shot at range. Obviously at close range, it will not be able to process it visually and move at the same time. But when you see it long range and it can see 75 frames per second, which is kind of slow-mo and that shot has slowed down significantly, Chances that I can see the shot and move accordingly, potentially. But we never know because we can't talk to pigeons. Um, although some people do, which is strange. So a pigeon actually has about the same number of photoreceptors in the front of its eye as a human, but its peripheral has twice as many. So its peripheral binocular vision or its peripheral sharpness has twice as many. So going back to us seeing this, a pigeon sees this in the same quality, but it sees that twice as sharp. However, bear in mind again that those eyes are so small that actually that this is not quite the same. Hence, it's almost impossible to understand how a pigeon sees. But I'm hoping this is kind of painting a picture of what it potentially might see like. We did want to like recreate it, but it would just be too conjectural, even for us. And that base is a lot also around colour. So a human has three types of colour cones in its eye. A pigeon has about five. So it can see a completely different color range to us. It sees the world in a completely different set of colors. These extra cones allow it to see further into the ultraviolet range. But, and we're gonna add some more interest and even more confusion to it, is the fact that its color cones are placed in different parts of its eyes. So that it can cut the blues out the sky to make it see predators easier and cut the greens out the floor to make it see predators a bit easier. Uh, it's pretty amazing, right? That it can see the floor in a different color to the sky is the ultimate predator, a prey. It's the ultimate prey. It's the ultimate anti-predator. It is literally science fiction bird. It's amazing, isn't it? The interesting thing here, as I've said, is that a pigeon is a very small bird with small eyes and a tiny brain. So it can't really potentially comprehend how it can see. It just sees how it sees. So it wouldn't be having this conversation to a GoPro I'm having now about how amazing its eyesight is. It literally lives to survive. It uses that eyesight not to die, not to do anything else, and to find its friends to find food. This is what a pigeon does. It's fascinating. But I don't think it would appreciate how simple our eyesight is. I think it'd be a much easier bird to, 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 to hunt, to control, if that was the case. So there you have it, the mighty wood pigeon. Probably the ultimate prey bird in the UK, whether that be for humans or for predator animals as well. There is obvious times a year that pigeons gorge themselves on certain foods so they can't even fly. They are not an intelligent animal and there's times of year where they are much more susceptible to predation. They are definitely more susceptible to the cold and winter and that is the biggest killer of them over and above humans by quite a long way. But controlling them over crops is necessary because as I said, they eat so much. They are such a greedy, gregarious bird that they'll all mob in on one crop and absolutely wipe it out if that is the case. But absolutely fascinating information. They fly so fast, they can turn unbelievably fast purely based on the fact that their wingspan to body ratio is almost that of a woodcock for aerodynamics and agility. They can see in like this beautiful way that I just can't comprehend, but I am absolutely fascinated with. To see colors that vibrant, to see everything in slow motion, to be able to process images that flickerate that fast, just wow. Anyway, when we're out of quarantine, I'm going to go and look at some pigeons and hopefully take a gun and hopefully protect some crops and hopefully 
enjoy the experience. Guys, take care. I hope you're safe. Be excellent to one another and just be sensible. Be loving, be caring. Goodbye.